How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today we're going to test out the Caterpillar CT680. It's a pretty popular one and I also wanted to know because it's pretty good uh, comparison to the Navistar which not everyone can get. Got a lot of stuff to get through today. I discovered a few things that are worth knowing. That's why it's a little longer than usual. Anyway, first things first, the engine. Third one down is the best, better, best power to weight and everything. The last engine's uh, pretty cheap. Gearbox, I'm going for the high range. As you will see as we carry on though, I do use the low range for a bit because with this I believe it benefits from it and like I say I'm not anti low range or anything I just most trucks I review I prefer high range um, suspension there is no raised suspension we'll also get into some other issues with the suspension because it basically has none uh, as for tyres I'm going for uh, chained again it's just because I don't want to keep chopping and changing throughout the video and chained are very good and when you look at the stats you basically just gain it's not got mud tires so you just gain ice traction uh, winch I've got the strongest winch uh, diff locks obviously you want the uh, engageable so like it just confused me at first I nearly bought the unlocked but when I read it I've already got the good stuff on uh, the spare wheel obviously that's just there in the middle bear in mind this thing already sits very low because of the suspension or lack of so you could catch that uh, spare wheel. Snorkels, it's got these big meaty snorkels which I thought was a pretty good sign usually when stuff's got snorkels pretty tall it's a good thing remember the little off-road drifting snail. Uh, All-wheel drive obviously you want engageable I just like the fact again that the actual axle changes and it has a diff and everything on it. As for add-ons you can add a lot if you look when I go past the fuel there's no travel on the rear suspension it's basically like the suspension's already collapsed uh, you can have a crane and a saddle, so that's good, which the Navistar can't, so that's one thing in its favour. But yeah, look, every other truck gets squidged. And I thought, oh, this got good suspension because it doesn't get squidged, but it's not. It just has zero suspension. Which, funnily enough, well, I'll get into a bit later, but I kind of discovered it. And uh, yeah, somebody else confirmed it for me, but I'll get into that pretty soon. As you can see, I don't know if that'll make it good for carrying fuel or not. It won't boat around a lot, but... Yeah, it's just got no suspension travel, so when you hit things, it's going to slam pretty hard. So, yeah, you might end up destroying it along the way, unless you're obviously taking it easy. Uh, as for the mud guards, you can't remove them, but they're branded, so I guess that's why. As for the front, I put the sun visor on. Then now you've got the usual things on the top, like roof beacons, uh, horns, all the normal stuff, really, nothing special. As for bumpers... This bumper is definitely the best, the stock bumper. If you look, I line it up against them boxes in the background. That's a lot worse. Not silly bad, but definitely worse. The next one up is also worse. They're about equally as bad. And this last one it is actually a little bit higher, but it also sticks out a lot more forward. So overall, it is slightly worse. The stock is the best one. But I would say that's, considering that the front wheels are very close to the front of the truck anyway, if you prefer the look of that, do it. Like It ain't going to make the world of difference, to be honest. But it, Well, we obviously do it with any bumper, but I think it's, yeah, it's just it's so, such a little difference that it ain't really going to make any odds. Uh, cabin protector. Funnily enough, I don't usually like the look of the cabin protectors on a lot of trucks, but on this I actually think it does suit it pretty well. I don't put it on because I don't want to adulterate like the uh, weight characteristics I've done every other truck with pretty like bare bones what it is uh, the exhaust I quite like them tall ones to be honest but I chose these because they kick the smoke out to the side and it isn't a smoky beast but I did that just in case as for the air rims you can see which ones are selected just because the rears remind me of the old BMW star alloys I know they're not for anyone who's like a Beamer fan who just freaked out at me saying that <laughs> but they just remind me of it as for colours um, that's what you buy it as it's like a dark blue and white I don't really like that it only is just something because it's a cat truck that I really like like obviously it's cat and that suits it that I was torn between those two I also really like that the black and white but just because I'm in the mood vibrant colors and this game's nice and bright and that I uh, yeah I don't like that it doesn't suit the cat it doesn't suit the modernness of the truck so we'll take her outside and uh, have a little look uh, very good looking truck I have to say I do like it, it's funny I like a lot of the old school trucks but that does look nice right see how low the rear is sat I'll get into it more later but that is basically 
you'll see. It does become a bit of a problem. Views inside, I like how big the rear window is and that I can see my rear tyres because when you're in low range and that is nice. If you're in interior view, you can see what the wheels are doing, if they're spinning or if they're not. Pretty modern uh, cab inside, obviously, especially compared to a lot of trucks on this game. The exhaust stack that gets in your way. Maybe some of the other exhaust stacks are a bit skinnier, but long story short, it's twin stacks and it's in your way a bit. That's what the horns are, which are, to be honest, is not too bad. Like it's got a bit of umph to it, so uh, yeah, it's not the best. Certainly not P16, but it's uh, decent. And the rev counter, it's like big dial, but it's the needle on the right. Uh, yeah, no, you can definitely see it, which I like. So we'll get setting off. It's a pretty quick truck, as you're about to see. This is one reason why I like chained, even not in snowy areas, is as you see that went to drift. I like drifting, so I'll put normal tyres on when I don't want to drift, but yeah, it stops it flicking out as much. As for trailers, right, this is where you're going to start to see the uh, low rear suspension, or no rear suspension. Look at the tyres on the trailers, particularly this last trailer. They're buried halfway in the ground, because this thing has front suspension, but it has no rear suspension, so the thing's sitting like it's got a lot of rake to the uh, truck, and that's making those wheel. When I bought the... Uh, trailer it just popped the wheels out it didn't jump the trailer around they just lifted up a bit as you see when I sell it it sits back down so that's just one way you can already tell something's not right but obviously as we keep going you're gonna see more and more you're also gonna see something I think pretty interesting I know I've been mentioning a lot about the uh, high range versus low range I just wanted to tell people my reasoning because they might either agree with the logic or you might be the opposite logic and that's what confirms that you prefer the low range. So I'm not trying to talk anyone into either but uh, yeah along here motors along very nicely. Uh, that's what I was going to say with the gearboxes though. You will see something I think is worth knowing just objectively worth knowing. Uh, going through here I was trying it out obviously as I do in auto and low. This truck definitely like yesterday the Zix didn't really care if it was in low range or auto it just bombed for everything at the speed it was going to. This truck definitely feels the benefit of low range with the diffs on. So not too long further from now I'm going to try it with the low range box because like I say in real life if I was just using this for my own gameplay I would because there was possible benefits to be had like it's got more of a it just feels more capable in low range so high low might get me going a bit quicker. As you can see, motors along up here. The steering's not as responsive as that Zix, but it's definitely nice enough that you can travel and do things. But as you can see already with the rear suspension, you'll see them bouncing around, which gives you the impression that it has suspension, but they're bouncing like down. If you look when I lean to the left, look at the left rears, look how much they jiggle downwards, but there's no travel upwards. So first thing is you'll slam into a lot of things because there's no give. But it's also, because it sits so low, you'll see something later which is pretty shocking how like I get stuck on a stone and it ain't a meaty rock. Uh, going along it, I always cut that corner out just because there's no loss to it, there's no bumps there or anything. Down here, get some pretty nice speed. This surprised me a bit though. One tree absolutely like just at the whole speed and weight of the thing. Which this is why I'm actually glad I've been killing trees, because it's taught me a few things. Like this, for example, is very powerful. I still think it's it's extremely light by the way that tree just stopped it dead. I still think it's got better power to weight than the Royal. Or, it's, or at least it's just a very meaty engine in this thing. But yeah, that surprised me how one tree just absolutely stopped it dead. So if there was a tree in your path up ahead, like make adjustments because this will just hit it and you'll lose all your speed anyway. Through here, same story as usual, it doesn't really like high or auto. Uh, put it in low range with the diffs on and uh, yeah, it's ticking along pretty slow. Like Obviously there's, this wouldn't be my choice to go off-roading if I'm honest. Um, once you get out of there though, like again, just because this is like an off-road game, one way we measure how good a truck is is how quick it can go through certain terrains versus others. So that's why I just, I prefer to try and get into auto and high if I can, just to see what it can do. Suspension wise, as you can see, I'm taking only one damage here and there. The suspension is actually pretty tough, but because there's no travel in it, every now and then you'll get that where you just give it a massive whack. 
I mean, jumping over all them rocks, there's no give. I'm having to lift the whole truck up rather than just each individual wheel reacting to it. And as you see now, like, I put it in low quickly, just, I suppose, for a demonstration. If you're going everywhere like this or just down a road like this, uh, the amount of, or lack of, suspension travel obviously isn't going to matter. But especially on a road, you're probably going to go down there in high range or at least auto that's going to pick up a bit, a bit of speed. And yeah, it takes some hits. Now this is where things start to get interesting and this is why there is a little bit more length to this video than usual even though I tried to keep it as short as I can. So right now I'm just testing in low and uh, auto and so on. Again this truck definitely felt the benefits of just constantly being in low range with the diffs on. So in a second I'm going to go back and get a uh, low range gearbox. But essentially as we can see like low is the happy medium with this and it just it ticks along fine and yeah a lot of trucks through here go faster and slower depending which bit this is just best in low and it ain't the fastest through here either and just before i get to the low range this is the suspension test i completely smash the suspension which means they now collapse and as you can see the front's now lower the uh, wheels more in the arch but the rear tires have not moved i can tell by the mud flaps the tyres are still peaking above the mud flaps, the same as they were before. So yeah, it has zero rear suspension, and one way that can, uh, well two ways actually, that can cause you trouble, is one, obviously there's no suspension travel so you hit a lot of things, but also, as you'll see, I'm, I keep constantly trying to catch the arse end as it keeps trying to drift, and because there's absolutely no travel, none of your weight can lean over to the left and say put more pressure on those tyres and grip in, it's just the whole thing becomes like a skid pan at the back, which is very fun for drifting, but it's not very efficient or safe if you're trying to travel with cargo. Now, when I said the other day as a half joke, I wasn't fully joking. If you don't have suspension, you can't damage it. But I've actually noticed driving that when you haven't got suspension, you don't damage a lot. And if you're watching the Tager game, the Rift gameplay the other day, when the Tager had no suspension, I took not a whole lot of damage when I was bombing along without it so I just obviously I wouldn't recommend it but you know what I mean it's like it's surprising I know the video is a bit long but I had to leave this in I was trying to race to the fuel station beautiful little full speed drift around that corner stick the honey on <laughs> at this point I was like fuck it I take back everything I said <laughs> get yourself a cat CT680 so if you can enter fuel stations like this like you need to that's a morale booster makes me feel good I mean, look at it, I'm like a Formula 1 pit crew and I'm out of there. <laughs> I squeeze every second of enjoyment out of this game. I ain't got time for realism and, like, saying goodbye to the guy who just gave me fuel or I stole it. Uh, anyway, this is heading back with uh, low range. And to be honest, even in high, this is so bad. I'm now watching a YouTube video. And luckily, I look back at the TV about now and miss that tree. But, yeah, it's just I can't handle high in, low rate in the off-road gearbox. However, I got back here because I wanted to know which works best is it worth having a low range for stuff like this and funnily enough I actually think medium low is the happy me it's like the Goldilocks gear the uh, high low just ends up you get a tiny little spurt at the start but then it wheel spins and just rooster tails causes water to splash up and you just wheel spinning for no gain in speed medium low is actually a very nice medium and uh, there's a tiny bit of wheel spin but not a lot whereas obviously low is just very slow I was talking to a guy the other day called Captain America and he's always he's like my uh, gut feeling fairy godmother but basically we were saying or he's he said the words perfectly that it's as if when you go into low range there's a rev limit and you watch now the gears in high low it's about 900 rpm in high range it's about 1300 uh, in low it was 800 in auto it was about 1100 there's um, low range again but the funny thing is after testing I actually think the rev limiter there's neutral by the way just to show you there is the full revs there I actually think the rev limiter is a secondary consequence of what they've actually done and all these gears have a speed limiter so basically, I'm just going to pluck these numbers out of the air because it could be different for each truck and blah, blah, blah. But let's just say that low range with this off-road gearbox, medium low, is 10 mile an hour uh, speed limit or 5 mile an hour speed limit. And once you've reached 5 miles an hour, 
like it would with cruise control in real life it then caps your rev limit because you don't you're already going five miles an hour so every now and then when it's at 800 rpm you might hit a rock and it slows you down the revs will blip up to about a thousand on this but it definitely doesn't go all the way but yeah like i'm not too sure i like that because this is what i was trying to tell you guys is like say you've gone for the low range gearbox because you benefit from the lower ratio gears in real life that's true and you'd be able to rev the lowest ratio gear through your full rev range in this game what you're gaining in lower gear ratios you're losing in the sweet spot of the rev range because it won't let you go all the way in the revs and i came back and tried it with a high range gearbox again and low range is also 800 rpm so they're about the same auto uh, is actually about was about 900 there but it because i'm already going in a faster bit that's probably why it was not quite a thousand high range was 1500 in high which i like because that's got that meatiness that's what i was saying but like i say i think it's the uh, speed that's being limited and it's acting like a real life cruise control because if I then went in high range down the road, it probably wouldn't get to 1500 revs because it doesn't need to. And as you see now, when I go back into low, it's on about 800. But when I hit a few things underneath, it blips up a bit to about 1000. But if I just pushed it against a tree, it wouldn't keep revving all the way up to like the truck's full rev range. And obviously in real life you get more torque from certain sweet spots in each gear like you're gonna get more torque from 6000 rpm than 2000 rpm whereas so when you drop it down a gear in this you'd think oh i'm gonna get more torquiness but yeah because of the rev limit you're kind of not and it's like i'm not gonna say it's i don't think it's a bug i think it's purposeful i think they've done this on purpose and before it sounds really bad I think the reason they've done it is because if you just flew up to max revs in every gear, even the lowest of low, you'd have to spend a lot of your time feathering the throttle. And for long-term gameplay, sometimes we all just want to squeeze the trigger. We'd rather lower it into a lower gear and squeeze the trigger than necessarily always have it in a higher gear and constantly be feathering the throttle. So I think they've done it on purpose to have some differentiation between like when you get rooster tails from spinning the wheel and not but I just needed to point it out because you need to know that you might have a truck that's your favourite truck and blah 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 and it just feels a little bit lacking in certain areas at least give high range a go because regardless of whether it's a better gearbox or a worse gearbox you might have a sweeter rev range which is important so now this was just like you see now i'm going full speed in auto the funny thing is first gear auto had a cap of about 1100 once you're actually going though in second third fourth etc it pulls all the way through the rev range but then when i hit the water now you see like whatever gear auto i mean i can't see because it shrinks the screen but the revs were almost at the top there and then once i let off a bit the revs now drop down to about 800 to a thousand because obviously i've not hit a speed limiter to be honest it's actually got like a speed limiter and a rev limiter because right now i'm stuck but it's still not revving all the way up to 2000 but it's revving a bit higher than normal because i'm not moving so there's still speed to be gained and it's allowing me to have a few more revs so yeah it's, it's a quirky mechanic i've not even really noticed it until now for death i had a gut feeling there was something like this going on and I've, this is now i found it so yeah just bear in mind that that's happening and if your trucks are feeling a little bit uh, just try it and see because yeah the revs might be better so this was now uh, low range on the road because I just wanted to see what actually happens when uh, can you see now the rev limit uh, sorry the speed limiter it gets to 25 and it will just keep me now at 25 the revs will go up and down depending on if I drop in a bit below 25 and it's trying to gate low now it's gone up to over like 1500 and it's because I'm on this rough road, so maintaining my speed, like there's a bit of room for wheel spin and stuff, so the revs can go higher. But yeah, it's basically, this is uh, the off-road gearbox in auto, there's like a 25 kilometer an hour or whatever cap, basically. And there's also a certain amount of cap on the revs, but 
As you can see now I'm on the road, I know the driving's not great but I am trying to <laughs> stare at the uh, speedo right now. Look, gets to 25 and now the revs drop right down because I'm on a road. So it do And that's what uh, my cruise control did on the M5 for example, like once I was at the speed it barely sit above uh, tick over because it didn't need much oomph to just maintain its own speed. And that's what this is doing. The back end stepped out there and that's what you'll see now in the high range gearbox as I come around this corner. You're constantly trying to catch the back end. It's fun, but if you're on an important mission and you've got half an hour till you go in bed or something, you probably don't want to take this because <laughs> you'll have to last half an hour. might be a rescue mission. So, as I'm driving along the road, again, apologise for the uh, iffy driving, but I am staring at the speedo right now. As you can see, the speedo's climbing up. The revs are almost, they were, going near the top, and I'm going through the gears. I ended up swerving off the road trying to stare at the uh, speedo, so I came here quickly and uh, I wanted to test it properly so as you can see the speeds climbing it's going through the gears it's not necessarily going right to the top of the revs but it's certainly going through the rev range and through the gears and obviously top speed in high range is about double low range to be honest low range seemed to be capped at about 25 this was getting up near a 50 I reckon but it's weird because it said 50. I would have said it's nearer to the speed of the Royal, which I'm sure says 90. So maybe the speedos aren't 100% accurate. I apologise, a little glitch there. But as everyone does, when you put it in a high range, it drove across a shallow snow. Here, though, it's suffering, and it's suffering for two reasons. One, I just don't think it's very good in off-road situations, not as good as other stuff. But because that rear suspension is non-existent, now when I try and get over this barrier... It just catches the uh, like steps. I know they are steps, but whatever that box is, if it's something else on top of steps. Eventually, I was able to winch something and pull myself over. This side, because the bank raised up, I didn't catch anything. But then when I go round now, front wheels get power. Muscle is not a problem. As soon as I get over here, though, I'm catching the fuel tanks and everything. And those mud flaps in front of the rear tyres, they act as like... When you're going through mud, they're just like big sails you've got to drag through the mud. It'd be nice if you could remove them. I can live with the rear, rear mud flaps, but those ones in front of the rears I don't like. Uh, up here in the snow, again, as you'll see, to be honest, this is also probably the secondary reason this video is a tad longer, is because getting every bit of off-road footage, it's just a bit slower than almost every other thing I've tested. Uh, it's definitely better I, in... Uh, low range with the diffs on but as you can see because of how low it sits that grey bush is already dragging me and that's really not helping but then because of, yeah like it's sitting so low that tree I knocked over that green one I'm still driving over look you'll see the branches ping off most trucks are just that would go under like the centre of your truck like your ground clearance but this thing even in shallow snow has no ground 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 clearance and uh, yeah that makes it suffer like on road driving obviously it's sweet on uh, dirt driving like just dry dirt roads that's not an issue here it's quite a long truck so beaching is already going to be worse but again if that rear was raised up more I'd be fine now so I eventually got on there dropped it off the front it slipped off however you remember the Tega, uh, the Voron sorry actually rolled there this thing to its credit the weight is ridiculously low. The cab weight is like non-existent. This thing's like a big wide sheet of metal on skateboard wheels. It's like you ain't going to tip it over. Because it's just so low and wide and yeah, there's just no weight. I had to come back for this bloody... I had to turn this off and go back. That's why there's no uh, all-wheel drive available right now. Because it performed so slowly in the upcoming tests, I actually lost this bit of footage off the first part. Um... Turning circle wise, as good as the ANK, the other day I would have said that's the best in the game, but that Zix yesterday walked over everything. I'd like to get more cargo gameplay, but just to float the idea, I'd like to do some kind of snow runner rally or road race, like TT racing, um, and get, like, I'll do cargo runs and I'll do like a little rally versus each other and make like different stages on track. So I just want to do something like that. I want to include more uh, cargo gameplay, but these videos are already long enough. When I came around this corner, I went wide and I wasn't happy with it and it beached, but I, I wasn't sure if my wideness was to blame, so I just reversed and attempted it again. 
as you'll see, high gear through here, not a problem. Get to here, bottoms out instantly and just stops me dead. On the other side is obviously them steps that are even lower than the fuel tanks. And right now I really can't move. I just wanted to check. Yeah, the revs like see they're building a bit more than 800 because uh, I'm not moving, so there's no speed limit cap that's kicking in. But there is still a certain rev limit cap. Um, I'm trying to pull off here, and I just really can't. I was trying all different gears. Obviously, I think low range with the diffs on is the best and the most grippy. But I just thought maybe some of the other gears will just give me that little bit of punch to drag myself over. But it's not happening. So in the end. I just uh, dumped the trailer basically. I was going to try and winch myself forward but I was like there's no point. It's effectively what I wanted to learn from this is it's too low and it doesn't like off-roading because I'm beaching not only the middle but the actual diffs of the rear wheel. You know like a diff's like a big bulge in the middle and then it narrows back out to like a, just an axle width. That bulge in the middle, that's what she said, is dragging on everything and that's uh, basically, in fact you can actually see in the snow <laughs> there's a little imprint down the centre line where it's dragging the diffs. So yeah, to be honest I definitely wouldn't really recommend this for off-roading because like I say there's a lot of stuff that can just do a better job than this really. I won't leave it to go all the way but as you can see, whether I, even now with the trailer off that's why I was like testing it all again. But I still think that auto might be a bit punchier in some situations but overall I went back to a uh, low with the diffs on so anyway for the water test now again turning's fine but you see I lose a lot of my speed when I enter the water and I believe the reason why is because obviously it sits so low I'm not just dragging six tyres or six banks of tyres through I'm now pulling the chassis the axles the diffs all sorts through and I know I appreciate even if it had suspension or whatever obviously the tyres are only as tall as they are but with this truck, the tyres go from 43 inch to 47. Like, you can actually put bigger tyres on, even without uh, raised suspension. But, like, the Voron, for example, and that's got still fairly small tyres. That goes from 43 to 50. So if you could lift the suspension on this and have, like, 50 inch tyres or 52s, you'd gain 3 or 5 inches of tallness, even where, like, the diffs... Well, I suppose you gain half of that, so about 2.5 inches of tallness of, like, where the diffs are. And uh, plus, if you had suspension that was like raised, it'd lift the actual chassis itself, including like the fuel tanks and everything. So yeah, it just it suffers in a lot of places really. Road driving would definitely be this uh, truck's strong point. Down here though, obviously once I put it in high, that's where I like to gain my time back. But you've seen there it hit the suspension just because there is nowhere for it to go. Obviously, the way the game mechanics worked, it exceeded like the minimum limit, so it cause damage uh, going up here in low just quickly while I uh, do an interior shot obviously again I like how uh, well I can see the back because I like to see if the wheels are how it's responding to the uh, terrain and stuff as for the bonnet it's definitely got Tager levels of vision like it's not the best obviously as I'm looking in the bottom left corner of the windscreen that snorkel is in the way a little bit as well. Not loads, but it is. It is there. Yeah, the bonnet does sit a bit high. Like the Voron, even though you can see the bonnet, had quite a low bonnet. I'll stick it in high now. I just wanted to see how much it bounces along. Obviously not as much as the uh, Zix, because this thing just... It has front suspension, but no rear suspension. So you do see suspension travel light in interior view, but not to the uh, degree that Zix was. See, even there, though, I just went a bit wide on the road and how slow it went. There, the bonnet, like, those rocks disappeared behind the bonnet for a second or two longer, which, obviously, when you're trying to be precise, that's what can catch you out. But, yeah, as you can see here, it's just this is how slow it is through snow, so I wouldn't bring it, really, because there's just other faster, better stuff, I think. There's a little edit here, because I, I went a bit too slow here the first time. I wanted a fairer test. And forget the fact that I hit that post, but... It did actually nosedive down and get back out the other side, which is one of the few trucks to actually manage that. And it actually did pretty nice through here, even in auto. It didn't really bog down or anything there, even though there was like that patch of mud. Along here, however, as soon as I landed in it, obviously rooster tails, drop it down to low with the diffs on. And uh, yeah, I tried high for the hell of it. I know that isn't the best gear, but I just want to see like what does it do. Does it 
stall or does it wheel spin? Um, yeah, next up is this rock bridge. To be honest, I had pretty high hopes for this rock bridge. It's got very good, like, uh, the way the front bumper's very close to the front wheels. Uh, it climbed up them rocks no problem. That's why I didn't really gun it in this one, because I wanted to see as it got the power to claw up them, uh, like, the lips of the rock. But And it does. Funnily enough, I was about to say I'd happily bring this truck with a trailer over that rock bridge. However, I probably wouldn't on this particular one because either side is snow and as you see there where there's a road it's okay it soon grips into that snow and then here I won't leave as much as I usually do but this is it like it goes very slow this is deep snow now I'm into but even when I get out the other side low with the diffs on is the best gear really and yeah it's not very fast obviously this is where um, high low in get a low range gearbox you can use high low in some situations, I believe here, high-low will just wheel spin, but there is slightly lighter off-roading where obviously high-low you'll get the full speed advantage of it. Uh, going through here, it did surprisingly well. One thing it does show me is unlike the Royal, uh, the power to the front wheels is actually pretty decent, so it's not just a gimmick, it is actually all-wheel drive. They are doing very well at clawing their own way through the mud in fact if anything they're spinning faster than the rears so yeah that is good but it's, again because the truck just sits so low it's not just dragging like itself through it's trying to drag the fuel tanks and everything so in the end i winched out and yeah i wouldn't recommend it through that mud unless you're driving a very close to the left edge and you can winch to trees so next is the uh, mounting test and to be fair it was doing pretty nice i already knew that it'd beach pretty badly so when I got here I did a sharp right just to try and go up that smooth a bit and then when I, when the rear wheels were over I could uh, turn back this way obviously the royal tipped there this thing is you'll see in a second why it's it's damn near impossible to tip but it's kind of in a category of its own because it's the equivalent of collapsed suspension every truck is harder to tip if it had collapsed suspension as you can see I beached over there and it slid the nose round this is very impressive though not a lot of trucks would do that with a uh, angle change like that. Whereas, again, because those front wheels are just practically at the front of the truck and the uh, stock bumper keeps it nice and tall, yeah, that was extremely good. I cut a bit out because essentially I was driving up and I beached on a few areas, so you just get used to aiming for where you know you won't beach. Now, this is obviously where I normally do the rolling test, and today is uh, no exception for trying at least. However, as you can see, the nose started to slide around. I'm turning like right. I wasn't trying to aim down the hill. But I wasn't going to let the uh, first try get away with it. I at least wanted to come back and see. First truck ever in these reviews so far that just sat there. Didn't actually go fully over. As I say though, because it's kind of got the equivalent of collapsed suspension. I believe actually the Tager did slide down for a lot of the way. Because instead of tipping it just slid because it, all its weight's in the base. But this would roll even less than the Tega. It's bloody hard to roll. I actually was like struggling. This is what I managed to do in the end. Was uh, find this. And just keep turning into it. I apologise there was a little glitch there. But all it did was obviously roll. When I got to here I thought oh damn it's gone. And then it carried on. It's very much like the Tega. As in it's a lot lighter than the Tega, which you can tell from when I hit that tree and it stopped me dead but there's so much weight in the base it's like the cab doesn't really weigh anything and the base is just like one thick meaty slab of metal that just ain't like that just holds all the uh, weight in it in low range with the diffs on this is the uh, white western star hill we'll call it I just wanted to look at the rev range while it was going up there it is still capped at about 800 Obviously, I'll keep an eye on other trucks. I won't go as much detail in uh, other trucks. The reason why this was the perfect video, I could have made the rev range thing a separate video, but it actually pertains quite a lot to this truck because it likes low range with diffs a lot. So that's why I just kept it in. And I know this has made the uh, video a bit longer. But yeah, I mean, look at this thing. Damn near impossible. By the time it actually goes, it was and then it hits the tree and it still wants to spin itself so yeah it's ridiculous i was almost at 90 degrees before it finally let go very very good for getting back to its wheels is what i've figured out bloody hard to get off its wheels but just by the way there i had actually 
actually already put slabs in, but I couldn't get over that rock that was in the middle that's under the trailer now, so I reversed back, deleted the slabs, and then moved a bit and put more slabs in. And the reason why I got stuck on the rock is because there's no suspension travel, instead of just making one wheel push the suspension up, it tries to make the whole truck and trailer lift, so this is where lightness is an issue. Even though the truck is very, very hard to roll, once a heavy trailer is leaning over to the side, this truck didn't have enough weight to stop that from happening, basically, to counter it. Whereas this is very, like, just thick, chunky chassis and diffs and all sorts. The trailer would have struggled more to flick this thing over. But I went back. It actually got up the hill without a trailer, and I was like, oh, okay, I'd like to see what it does then. Now you see, going up there, because there's no suspension travel, the trailer's pushing me down and my wheels came up. That took me three or four attempts just to get up that first lip. Now the trailer is catching. However, I was prepared. I was like, nope, <laughs> I ain't ready for your shit game. I'm, uh, I'm getting this done. Winch the taker, because this is where I wanted to start from. And actually pretty impressive, to be honest. Obviously, uh, low range diffs on. I'm in the high range gearbox, but... Again, if you've seen from the other video where we went up the hill, the high range, because it keeps the revs a bit higher, that might be beneficial. You can see the front lifting up a lot. It wheelies a lot because so much of that weight is just right on the back edge of the uh, truck. And because there is no suspension, again, it just seesaws your front in the air. And as I'm coming up here, this is where you'll see the problem with just how low it is. Obviously, that rocks in the middle, and I was like, oh, crap. I couldn't reverse too much because I'm hitting the bank. But eventually, I did turn and I got out of the way of this rock. But you can see how much trouble it's given me. And this alone, when I seen it, I was like, oh my god, I wish I'd known sooner and I would have uh, moved out of the way. This could have done me now and got me stuck here, but I managed a lot of jiggling side, like reversing a tiny bit. I managed to get out. But then, well, keep watching. It's, uh, it's a bit disappointing, but... I got stuck here and I was like, what am I bloody stuck on now? I was trying to look around. Look where the rear diff is. You'll see a little rock there, right. Look at the size or lack of size of this rock. See that little red-ish coloured rock? That is wedging under the diff that's like a big bulge in the middle of the rear axle diff. And there, when I eventually moved to the side, I edited out like four or five attempts. I promise you, that little rock was it. It was wedging in the middle of the diff and if you look in the footage... When I moved over to the side and where the diffs narrow back out to axle width, it fit through that gap. But that's how much of a small stone completely stopped me dead. Like, I'd say a small stone, not even juicy or meaty. It didn't even get that far. I'm surprised how much damage it took when it hit that um, telegraph pole at such a low speed, but it did. Going up here, again, this was never meant to be added. It's just while I'm there with that trailer, I like to know. But... I was pretty impressed to be honest. When I started going up here, again, first problem is it wheeled, and it did this about three or four times. So I'll edit that out and we'll uh, show you like the six more successful attempt, shall we say. Pretty damn impressive though, low range diffs on, big old wheelers, but the fact that it's actually got the muscle to get up here and it's not just dying and locking the tyres up, I was definitely very impressed. Again, I did use the winch a tiny bit, but I got high enough to use the winch point, so that's the bonus you get if the truck can make it high enough. However, because of so much wheeling, I'm obviously trying to turn to the right. By the time I actually get my front wheels back, I'm in the trees. Now, you'd think, well, that's not too bad, just a quick bit of reversing. Well, reverse a little bit. Admittedly, it went a bit far, but there is a big trailer dragging me back down the hill. I wasn't, like, super late on trying to stop or anything. I only put a tad of reverse. Now, because it's so low, the legs of the uh, trailer are grab uh, like catching on the uh, edge of that hill, really. So, long story short, I winch myself up. But yeah, it's funny because it's like it doesn't really like off-roading. This actually really surprised me, which is why I left it in. I thought, yeah, it's got no chance. This is that river in Zimnigorsk. You just left the garage and you sort of head into where you find the TUZ. I thought this thing is going to bog down for fun. I still ain't sure how it really got through because the, the Dan doesn't like getting through here. The ta I mean, it's not the quickest through here. Stuff is quicker. The Tager's quicker. The Tatrin's quicker. But I really didn't think with how low it sits that it'd even get through there because it's very boggy mud underneath. But it's still got the power to pull its way through the mud, I suppose. And yeah, that definitely impressed me. That's hence why I made sure to leave it in. 
this is how I end up driving the truck. Again, this wasn't supposed to be in the clip, but because it's so slow in mud, I just start driving around the edges, and this is again for my personal playstyle. High, uh, high range or off-road gearbox. I like the high range gear because obviously sometimes I wanna, I want the full snow runner experience, and I'll be driving off in the mud and all sorts. But when I just want to get somewhere, I tend to skirt my way down the edges, and this is the perfect truck for that kind of playstyle because it's pretty damn nippy down the edges, but you hit the mud and it goes a lot slower. And I know it's pointless, but I wanted to know. <laughs> I'm heading to where you get the uh, tattering from. Didn't even drop out a high. That's why I thought it was quite nice. I was definitely feathering the throttle as I'm dodging the trees. And I managed to get there in one without letting off. Or letting off enough to where it then died in high range. Uh, quick speed test. It's definitely pretty rapid. I'm not too sure the speedo is accurate if it's saying 50. Because I'm pretty sure it is quicker than that. However, it definitely isn't as quick as like the Royal and the Voron and the Tega and the ANK. But it ain't far off. Now interestingly, when I landed in air, as you can see, it started to float, and at this point I thought, oh, it's like a little baby twin steer, where it's going to tiptoe its way along, which was looking pretty damn good. I was like, ah, oh, I like this. However, sadly, as you can see, it starts to tip over to the right, and it doesn't get any better. That's basically now just balanced on one back corner wheel. One plus side to having basically collapsed suspension, it was very good at getting down here, not a lot makes it down there, like I've said, so that was a bonus. Like, it took a lot of damage, though, because there's no travel, but it still got down there, which is a plus in my book. The reason why I put this on is because I wanted to see uh, if that had helped balance the weight once I start wheeling, but this time I've actually just drove in the water, not flew off the cliff or anything. And it is actually definitely wheeling, so through some bits of water briefer periods of water you could actually do this but as you can see look at it it starts going and it's just going to keep getting worse also can you see the top of the cab i mean i'm not shaming anyone each to their own but this truck's got a wig on look at it it's a little toupee is flopping around in the water all right that ain't a that ain't a side parting that's a fucking wide parting One thing I can definitely confirm is the driver ain't called Jack, because that fucker let go for a drop he even touched him. <laughs> you watch that back, he's like, I'm out. Gone. That's it, the angry sea worm's got him now. He's done. But yeah, it's not very good for long distance heavy swimming because it slowly starts to float just on one wheel and it tips over. Maybe play around with other uh, add-ons and it might help, but obviously that's for you to decide if you enjoy the truck enough. As for my overall conclusion, it is actually a very good truck in terms of power, like the speed, all that. However, the rear suspension being non-existent is definitely a problem. It's funny, because I was already making this video tonight. I'd already smashed up the uh, suspension to double check that it doesn't go anywhere when it's collapsed. And that same guy, Captain America, who I was chatting with the other day, where he said it's basically like it caps the rev limit, he also confirmed earlier, he said... Um, Basically, he can look into the, like the numbers and the files of the game. This suspension has 0, 0.0, so it is literally like it has no suspension. Whereas obviously every other truck has some kind of value. Um, as for the gearbox, like I say, this is a very good contender. I'd probably take off-road for a lot of situations because then you've got the uh, high-low options. But obviously just bear in mind that rev situation and speed limit thing. Like In some situations, it's capping the advantage you gain from lower ratios um suspension like i say if it, that's what it needs not just its suspension actually having some but if it had raised suspension as you can see little tires are 43 the big ones are 47 if they were more like 50 but you can see how low the chassis sits level with the wheels and you see where the mud flaps are not the very back ones but the mud flaps in front of the rear wheels they should be covering the tops of those wheels, like if the suspension was lifted up, those rear tyres, the tops of them, would disappear. And if I pull up the uh, Navistar now, look at those rear mud flaps. That's because the suspension is working on that. And this also has raised suspension. Overall, I will say, this Navistar is 
it's better than the uh, cat for off-roading. The cat, it's got to be close. This has got a pretty damn meaty engine, but road driving wouldn't really matter. I will just say, though, this in real life is built by a defence contractor for the military. This is a civilian vehicle. This also costs 56 grand. The Navistar costs 141 grand, and you have to buy it off the PS Store, or you got it as a pre-order bonus. But that's what it costs, so... This thing is good, and it's a third of the price. Uh, yeah, overall, I'd say get it if you enjoy it. Like, it's quick and all that, but just bear in mind there is better stuff for off-roading because it sits too low. So that's about it for today. Like I say, sorry it is a bit of a longer video. I'll try and keep them, like, under 30 minutes if I can, but, yeah, there was a lot to discuss. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.